Call of Juarez Bound in Blood, a game which, given the similarity between its subtitle and the name of one of the greatest thrash metal albums of all time, I expected to be some kind of Exodus-themed shooter with a country-western twang. Sir. Lieutenant Fox needs you on the flank. Yankees are taking the fall. So imagine my disappointment when I discovered this has very little to do with Exodus or thrash metal in general. This go. isn't bonded by blood, this is bound in blood. The 2009 prequel to the 2007 original Call of Juarez. Now, Bound in Blood marks the first time Call of Juarez has appeared on a PlayStation platform. The original was only released for the Xbox 360 and Windows-based PCs, so for Sony owners, Bound in Blood is their first chance to ride the prairies and blast them varmint Yankees. And that's certainly a cause for celebration if you're into shooters or Sergio Leone movies, but regrettably, Call of Juarez arrives on Sony's platform with a bit of a stutter. You see, Call of Juarez Bound in Blood uses a checkpoint system. Each level provides a series of checkpoints which act as respawning points when you die. That's nothing new. But in the PS3 version, Reaching a checkpoint prompts your game to freeze anywhere from 4 to as high as 10 seconds. Now, that might not sound bad, but keep in mind it happens frequently during each mission. It really breaks up the experience, and it's a problem that's non-existent in the other versions. So if you're interested in Bound in Blood, and you have a few different systems, the PS3 version should be the lowest on your proverbial totem pole. But that said, it's still a solid and very entertaining game, so if you're bound to Sony, you can still have one hell of a time with Bound in Blood. Bound in Blood goes all George Lucas on us and gives us the backstory for the original game's Reverend Ray a pistol-toting preacher whose brimstone sermons speak of God and pain, and not necessarily in that order. The story begins as Ray and his brother Thomas abandon their posts as soldiers in the Confederate Army and rush to their homestead to protect it from the Yankees. It may be a noble decision, but it leaves their Confederate commander in a rage. He vows to hunt them down and, to use the vernacular of the era, stretch their necks. The story takes plenty of narrative twists from there, including all the Wild West cliches we know and love. Indians, buried treasures, burning saloons, the sheriff's daughter, it's all there. And even though the game's story wears a very old hat, it pulls it off well and actually stays entertaining for the duration. Some of the voice acting and dialogue in particular deserves mention, if only for the awesome southern mannerisms and, um... Well, we'll call it Way With Words. Right, now get the hell out of here before I take your firearm and shove it where the sun don't shine. Call of Juarez Bound in Blood is obviously a western-themed first-person shooter, and it executes both its western theme and its shooting mechanics very well. You'll join Ray and Thomas as they gallop through gorgeous environments typical of the American frontier. Broad prairies, withered cornfields, one-horse desert towns with swing-door saloons, the game's locations do a fantastic job of conveying the theme and maintaining the mood. And although Bound and Blood suffers from a few technical issues like excessive clipping and screen tearing, these environments are generally as fun to look at as they are to explore. In terms of its gameplay mechanics, Bound in Blood is a lot like every other shooter you've ever played, but it does distinguish itself a bit. Prior to many of the levels, for example, you get to choose which of the McCall brothers you'd like to play as, and each has his own strengths and weaknesses. Reverend Ray, as you might expect, is the badass among badasses. He's devastating at close range with weapons like shotguns, and he can take a lot of damage, but he's not all that great of a shot. Thomas, on the other hand, has a lethal aim, and he's a lot more agile than his brother, so he can climb roofs and treetops with his lasso, 
but he's also a lot weaker. Now, the differences between the McCall brothers don't open up new routes through the levels or anything, but rather, it's more about your style of play. Now, that may sound like a thin difference, but it does tailor the game to your specific style, and it affords much more replay value than Bound in Blood would otherwise have, if not for the online multiplayer, than to play with a different brother and a different approach. This game is really focused on action. The missions are designed around the constant attack of Yankee soldiers and former allies, and although they offer a few different twists on that formula, they rarely change it. This gives Bound in Blood an almost action western feel, so if you're looking for lots of shooting, you'll love this approach. Although the PS3 version struggles with a few technical issues, it's still a lot of fun to play. From the graphics to the sound and music, the presentation is spot on, and the gameplay is fast paced and satisfying. But keep in mind, the McCall brothers don't mince words or gameplay, so if you're looking for variety, be forewarned. These psalm bitches let their pistols do the talking. Get 